What's up guys? So here we go. We're going to do another video completely different than any of the others. Um, you, you know, I, I talked before about, uh, you know, different people find different things interesting. Uh, and this is one of the things that I do that, that a lot of people, when they find out, uh, they are interested in it. Uh, so I figured I would kind of do a little bit of an introduction and, and talk to you guys about it. Uh, and that is, uh, we are going to get ready to shave. <laughs> now that might not sound like, uh, like that interesting. Um, however, we're going to shave a little bit different than, than most people would. Uh, we're going to keep it somewhat simple because I do want this to kind of not only be a, uh, I guess an introduction to, to some of you guys, uh, but also for, for some of the people that may come across this video, uh, if it's something that they're trying to get into or interested in or whatever the case, uh, I want it to, to kind of serve as, I guess, an introduction for them, something that maybe helps them get started if, if they want to. So anyway, what makes this different is we're going to do a wet shave uh, or a traditional wet shave. We're going to be using a badger brush, um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be badger. Several years ago, in fact, I was just having a conversation the other day, uh, you know, 12 years ago, I think it was when I first started wet shaving, um, you know, there was, there was the badger brushes, and then if, if you really wanted to go the cheap route, um, you could get bore. And back then, there were a few brushes that were synthetic, and they were really, really terrible. But, you know, in the last several years, as, as I've come to find out, uh, synthetics have really made a lot of leaps and bounds. I, I can't really speak much to them because I have not really tried any of the new synthetics, but I can tell you that from the feedback that I'm hearing from people that have or do, um, is that they are much better. It still seems to be, um, you know, people who have only used synthetics love them. People who have used both, uh, particularly a really nice badger brush, um, you know, they, they'll, they'll tell you that it still doesn't compare. There's, there's not a comparison. It's, it's still, you know, the badger still wins out. Um, however, with that said, like I said, supposedly the synthetics are really leaps and bounds ahead of, of what they were a few years ago. Uh, this particular brush here uh, is actually made by a company called Edwin Jagger. Uh, this was, um, I don't know, this was probably one of my probably second brushes that I ever got. Um, you know, it's, it's the rating of it is best badger. There's different ratings of, of badger, uh, the hair itself. Some of it depends on where it comes from the animal, um, how, you know, soft and, and nice it is or whatever. Uh, there's different size knots. So for example, this brush you can see is relatively small in comparison to this one. Um, and you know, again, there's, there's preferences either way. Um, this is typically, you know, it's a great starter brush. Um, it's also great if you're traveling because rather than having this size thing, you can just have this. Um, and then also, uh, the method that we're going to use here is, is uh, basically using, in this case it's a scuttle, but basically think of a, a bowl. So we're going to be whipping the lather in the bowl. Um, these brushes, little brushes with small knots like this, are actually really good for doing, you know, on, like actually lathering the cream on your face directly. And then, you know, there's all sorts of, like we talked about, uh, different types of hair, different size knots. Um, this is another brush, again, in comparison, um, it's, you know, kind of a medium. But you can see it has a bit of a different shape. This is, this is what's considered a fan shape. Um, so it's not as rounded as this brush. So I don't know how well you'll be able to see, but if you look, you can kind of tell that this brush is much less dense. There's not nearly as much hair in it as what there is in this brush. Um, so this brush tends to be, you know, more floppy is what it's called or, or considered. This has more kind of backbone to it. You know, you can kind of charge it up and, and just overall a, a much better um, brush. You know, this is actually, this is probably, this is a Savile Row. Um, uh, I believe the specific model is a 3128. So it's got a 28 millimeter uh, knot in there, which is a relatively large knot. It's very, very dense. Uh, it's all silver tip badger hair. So you can see like here, you know, mostly it's brown, but here you can see the tips of all of this are very silver. Um, that's the best, um, you know, rating of badger hair. So 
that's just a couple of different brushes. You know, there's there's really there's there's a ton. Today we're going to be using this one. This one uh, not only is it pretty much my best brush um, out of all the ones that I have, but it's also the one that I use all the time. I, I really really you know I, <laughs> when I first started wet shaving, like I said, like 12 years ago there's you know there the running joke is the ad or acquisition disorder um you tend to want to try to get a lot of things and try different things and whatever and at one point uh, i've still got a lot of brushes but at one point i just had a massive amount of brushes i've gotten rid of a lot of them sold them things like that um but this is the one that you know even with the brushes that i still have this is the one that I always seem to grab. Um, I really, really like this brush. So we're going to be using that. And, you know, with, with wet shaving, basically you've got a cream. Now, <laughs> some of you might be familiar with what some people refer to as canned goo. It's the stuff you would walk into Walmart or Walgreens or whatever and pick up. Um, and, you know, a lot of times they're gels or there's the older, you know, foam, you know, it just dispenses foam. Um, we're not going to be using those. Um, I won't go into a lot of the specifics about why shaving this way is so much better. <laughs> there's so many advantages and so many wonderful things about it. Um, needless to say, the, the canned goo just, it, it doesn't offer the type of cushioning or the slickness. Um, it, it just doesn't work nearly as well. Uh, the other thing is, you know, the scents. You can you can get in the in the traditional creams. Um, there's so many different types of scents, and and there's also soap. So, um, you, you know, like I said, some of you, even if you weren't familiar with terms, may remember, you know, possibly your parents or your grandparent or grandfather, um, you know, brush or shaving with a with a, a badger brush and and an old soap or whatever. Um, you know, basically they function the same. Soaps tend to be a little more slick and less less cushioning. Um, creams tend to be a little more cushioning and a little less slick, at least compared to a soap. But a lot of that has to do with how you actually lather it and how you do it. Um, you know, you can get a, a soap to perform just as well as a cream. You can get a cream to perform just as well as a soap. It really just depends. You know, it's about how used you are to that particular cream or soap as well. Um, there's lots of different types. Like I said, the, the soaps all typically come in a puck. Um, those are the ones that, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, again, if your father or grandfather, if you saw them shaving this way, you know, they may have had a little mug with a puck of soap in the bottom of it. Um, a lot of the soaps today, they are still pucks. Sometimes they're in a container um, and you open the container and the puck's in the bottom. Um, I tend to prefer to shave um, with creams for a while. Uh, I was actually shaving with straight razors. Um, and I, I like that, but I like the convenience of shaving with the double edge, which we'll talk about in a moment. Um, and for me, when you're shaving with a straight razor, and, and not just me, I mean, there's, there's, everybody has different opinions, obviously, um, but there does seem to be a little bit of a consensus that says um, if you're shaving with a straight razor, most people prefer soaps. On the other hand, if you're shaving with a double edge, a lot of times people prefer the creams. So today we're going to be using a cream. They're available in all sorts of different varieties as well, as well as scents different brands, whatever. Creams like that, and, and as you can see, you know, that comes in a tub. Um, the cream itself basically almost looks like a, a you know, <laughs> what you would see, like Noxzema or, or, you know, a thick uh, hand lotion, maybe, you know, really thick hand lotion, something like that. Um, and then they're also, as I said, there's different varieties. Um, so this is True Fit and Hill. Um, this particular one is 1805, um, and again, if you've noticed, a lot of these are, are made in London, England. Um, you know, that's that's not all of them, obviously, uh, but that does. You know, a lot of them do come from there. Um, this is probably one of my favorite creams. Uh, I use it fairly often. Uh, again, the the scent of this one is is kind of a it's a little bit of a citrus type scent um not like a strong citrus citrus but kind of a, a perfume 
um, cologne type of smell, but more, you know, on that, those citrus notes. Um, a really, really, really nice, nice scent. Uh, one of the great things about wet shaving is the smell. Uh, when you're lathering and putting it on your face, you know, you're just kind of, I guess, uh, <laughs> bombarded with that, that smell and it just really permeates and penetrates and, uh, uh, it's it's just a really nice experience. There's also creams and tubes. Um, again, those are the tubs. Uh, this particular one here. So this is Pro Rasso. Um, this is an Italian cream. Uh, and as you can see, it is in a tube. Um, and, you know, this is a really great one. Uh, this particular uh, version of this cream has aloe and vitamin E in it, a lot of aloe and vitamin E. Um, this is a really, you know, makes a really, really great um, lather that's, that's just really gentle and really nice. You know, some of the favorites that, are, that, that people tend to, to gravitate to uh, are a lot of the sandalwood uh, shaving creams. They're popular. The lavender is popular. Um, you know, there's a lot of the, the, you know, cologne type scents like the 1805. Um, and then you've got just some of your general like uh, West Truffitt and Hill, their West Indian Lime uh, is probably one of the most popular ones that they have. Uh, so I mentioned that we're going to be whipping the, uh, the cream in a, in a bowl. Uh, you can use a traditional bowl, you know, just a regular size bowl or, or a lot of people tend to use rice bowls um, because they tend to be a little bit heavier. Um, I'm going to be using, it's called a scuttle. So basically inside of here is just, you know, some kind of ridges that, that help, uh, you know, whip the lather a little bit better. And it also has this hole here. So you can see the whole thing is shaped almost like a little tea kettle or something. Uh, and what that's for is you fill this up with hot water. Uh, it's kind of hollow in the middle there. Um, and then that way, while you're shaving, it actually keeps the lather in your brush very warm because that's part of the experience too. Um, so we're going to be using that, uh, again, anything will work, a bowl, it, it, even if you don't want to use a bowl, you know, a lot of guys, what they'll do is, is they'll just, you know, load the, uh, the cream up in the breech, uh, and they'll just, you know, whip it in their hand and, and create the lather that way. Like I said, you can do it directly on your face. Um, and then of course the, uh, the main element of the show here is the razor, uh, the, the workhorse, so to speak. Um, double edge razors are what we're going to be using. So uh, a kind of traditional one here, as you can see, um, you know, basically the way these work, this one in particular, um, the top unscrews and you can see the blade sits in there. So there's the blade right there. Um, it just sets right up in there like that. And then this part, sets down on top of there and then you tighten it down and then this one is actually adjustable so you can adjust the gap. The gap is is actually between this part here which is the guard and the top part here the head you can adjust how high that is which adjusts where the razor sits within that gap. Um, this is uh, AmeriCorps um, and basically like I said it's, it's called the Progress. Um, it sets in just like I just showed you there. And then once it tightens down, it is adjustable. So there's a little scale here that you can set. So you can always get it set to the same place if you want. Um, this is made by the same company. This is called the Vision. This is a Vision 2000. It was an updated one. They originally put this out. There were a few issues with it. Um, they updated and made a lot of the, the changes to it. This is, again, just like this is my go-to brush. Um, this is pretty much my go-to razor. This is the one that I tend to prefer. Um, it's, it's a little bit heftier than, uh, than a lot of the other razors, so you have to be careful, especially with your pressure. Um, it, you know, this is not something that I would necessarily recommend to someone who is just starting wet shaving, because even, even if you're used to using um, a manual razor, like one of the multi-blade ones that, that you know, most people would use, um, you know, those things are really, <laughs> it doesn't seem like it, but they're really made where you're just kind of mashing it into your face really, to, or really hard. Um, these things take an extremely light touch. Um, I can't emphasize that enough. I mean, you're just really barely letting it touch the skin. Um, 
if you if you don't if you if you kind of do it really hard it's not that it's going to cut you in fact um, these you know one of the things about these particular types of razors the, the double edge razors in general a lot of people think oh I'm gonna you know get cuts all over and I'm gonna you know make my face look like meatloaf <laughs> um, it, it's really not that easy to cut yourself with one of these I mean as long as you're somewhat careful uh, with that said, what will cut you very, very quickly with one of these is letting it slide sideways. If that blade is on your face and it goes sideways any at all, it's going to cut you. Um, that's really the only danger. As long as you keep it moving straight, it's absolutely fine. Um, what you will do though, especially if you're using too much pressure, is it's kind of scraping the skin rather than just riding across the surface. Ideally, I mean, if you think about it on a, on a macroscopic level, you want that blade just barely riding the surface of the skin and, and popping those whiskers off. Um, if you're pushing down in, then you're not only getting the, the razor or the, the um, whiskers cut, but you're also scraping the skin and, and taking layers of skin off as well, um, which overall, when you're done, you look and you're like, wow, I got a great shave. This is fantastic. And then all of a sudden you're like, wait, that's kind of burning and your face starts turning red and you get all kinds of irritation and things go really really bad um, and then you know those are, are relatively new uh, I mean they're not new obviously but you know newer uh, manufactured razors you know they're certainly not something that, that your grandfather would have been using um, however there's a lot of people that, that really like the, uh, the older razors and, and some of them, you know, really give a, a great shave. This one, for example, um, this is actually a Gillette Super Speed. Uh, this one, I believe the date code on it is 1957. So this is a 1957 Gillette Super Speed. Um, you know, this is a very mild razor. This is actually a great razor for someone who's first starting out. Um, it is also adjustable. Now this is a twist to open. So on the bottom, just like on the progress, where we unspun that and we were able to lift the head, this one, as you spin it, the, the doors actually open. You drop the blade in and then you twist it and it closes back up. Once it's closed back up, up here on the neck is actually, you might even be able to hear the clicking there. That's where you would adjust where the blade is actually sitting or how much. Um, you know, some of these are fixed. Um, when they're fixed, you can get them in kind of, you know, different razors have different designs. So some are a little more aggressive, some are more mild, um, some are right in the middle. The adjustable ones, the great part about that is you can really, you know, you can set it down to a lower level and have a very mild shave. And then at the same time, once you get more experience or if you have a heavier beard, whatever, um, you can really crank it up and, and get, uh, you know, a more aggressive bite out of it. So anyway, so today we are going to use the Vision. Um, like I said, it, it tends to be my go-to. Uh, and actually, I'm going to go ahead and grab a new blade because this one's got a few shaves on it. I want to get a nice new blade in there and I'll show you a little bit about that too. Alright, so blades. Um, you know, again, if, if, if you, you may have already seen it before, um, but basically the blades come in little packages like this. Um, you know, again, there's all sorts of different, um, you know, manufacturers and, and different blades and they all feel different. And, and it does get kind of complicated in some senses because, you know, certain blades work better with certain razors. Um, and, and it's all kind of a subjective experience. So what works for you, you know, you might say, hey, uh, I love the, the Progress razor with a feather blade in it. Um, on the other hand, you know, I might prefer the Vision with a Derby blade in it. Um, you know, it's, there's, and there's, there's so many different kinds of blades, so many different things to try. And, and I guess that's really part of the, the fun experience of wet shaving in a traditional way like this, is that there are so many different things to try and you can you know, really dial things in exactly the way that you like them. So, the one of the advantages to wet shaving also is is the cost. Um, <laughs> once you get over that acquisition disorder, uh, which can cost you a little bit in the beginning, uh, it certainly doesn't have to if uh, if you can, you know, safely inoculate inoculate yourself against that. But um, 
you know, once you get over that, I mean, the, the razors themselves are relatively inexpensive, especially some of the older stuff. You know, you can find them a lot of times on eBay or, or on some of the forums and things like that. Um, you know, they can be picked up very cheap. The blades, the blades are where things really, really shine in terms of cost. Um, you know, if you're used to those multi-bladed things, I, I just have, for fun the other day, I, I happened to look, uh, and we were actually in one of the big chain box stores, um, you, you know, where things were supposed to be really cheap, and, and there was a pack, I, I want to say it was like, I think it was the four or five blade um, razors, uh, you guys know who I'm talking about. Um, and I, I think it was 10 or 12 was in the pack and it was like $48, $49, something like that. And that was with a coupon. Um, so, I mean, really, really expensive. It, when, when you think about it, you know, you're getting 10 blades for 50 bucks, basically. Um, to me, that's just crazy, especially when you consider these guys, because these, you know, these little white things here, these are a pack of five blades. Um, when I buy them, I typically buy them in boxes like this. This is a box of a hundred. There's 20 of these. Each one of these is a five pack. There's 20 of those five packs in these boxes. So these are Derby, um, Derby Extra. Um, these are a really nice blade. I like these. Um, they tend to be, uh, you know, very sharp, but also pretty smooth. Um, you know, I find them to work really, really well in pretty much every razor that I have. Um, I, I really honestly can't think of a razor that I've owned or own currently that I've not found these to perform very well. Um, and then these, these are feather blades. Um, <laughs> these are, are a little bit notorious in the wet shaving world. Um, there's a lot of people that really love them. There's a lot of people that really hate them. The reason is these are extremely shot or sharp. These, the, the Derby blades, I believe, are made in Turkey. Um, these are in, from Japan, um, and these are just it, it, there's there's no doubt about it. These are the sharpest blades that you can purchase. Um, they are very sharp, and because of that, they can be very unforgiving, especially of that pressure and things like that. However, with the right razor and with the right technique, you cannot get a better shave, in my opinion, than you can with these right here. So um, anyway, the, uh, as far as cost, what we were talking about, you know, I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. The, the last time I bought uh, derbies, um, and, and again, it's not like you gotta buy them very often. I, I think uh, I bought, I believe I bought 200 of these or maybe it was only a box of 100 i think it was a box of 100 when i first started wet shaving now i've used other blades and things as well and and sometimes you know they'll get forgotten about or a pack gets lost or whatever um but the bottom line is you know i just did have to replenish my supply of derby blades um i bought two of these boxes so that's 200 blades and it cost me nine bucks uh and that was nine dollars shipped so just imagine, I mean, compare that. That was 200 blades for $9 versus going out if I had bought some of the multi-blade things. Think about what the cost would have been if I had tried to buy 200 of those things. Um, I don't have that kind of money, I can tell you. So, um, you know, that's where the wet shaving really shines. And, and to me, it's a much better shave. It's, you can do it with less irritation. Again, assuming you've got good technique, which, can be worked on, um, you know, a lot less irritation than you would get from, from some of those other manual razors that you pay a fortune for. Um, it's, it's just a win-win situation, really. So it's great. I love it. Um, so today, what we're going to do is we're actually going to use a, a derby blade. Uh, and part of the reason is, like I said, because it is a lot more forgiving. Um, and being that I'm trying to record this and do this, I'm, you know, I'm not sure how much attention I'm really going to be giving to it. So I want a more forgiving blade in there. Uh, and out of all the blades that I do have, the derbies are probably the most forgiving that I do have. Uh, and as I mentioned, we are going to put a new one. So this is very much like the Gillette. Uh, down on the bottom here is a uh, kind of a twist. And basically what you do is twist that open. 
and that will open the doors here. And let you get the blade out. So this is the old blade. Um, and you can put those either back in the package. A lot of the packages, I don't know if you can see here or not. But basically underneath of them, they have a place where that old blade can slide in the bottom. Uh, or you can get, you know, there's, there's blade safes or whatever. That's just a large container that you can just throw them in when you're done. Um, and then we'll take a new blade. And it comes in kind of a little, almost like a wax paper protective cover there. So there's our new blade. And we're just going to drop that right on top, just like that. Spin this back the other direction to close those doors. And then we're just going to make sure that everything is lined up and looks good, and it does. So we'll tighten that down. And then this right here is where we can actually set. So as I turn this, I don't know if you can see, but you can see the, the top and the blade itself kind of drops down lower and lower and closer to that guard. So the idea there, again, is, is that allows you to kind of set, you know, how aggressive you want that, that razor to be. The next thing we're going to do... We're gonna, we're gonna do a prep. So just like anything else, right now, um, the whiskers that I have, um, they're, they're very rough. I mean, that's normal, right? So the first thing we wanna try to do is soften those up because the softer they are, the easier they're gonna shave. So that's where we do like a pre-shave. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. You can, you know, just take a hot towel and wrap it around your face. Um, you know, there are pre-shaves, there's oils, Truefit and Hill actually makes a, uh, I believe they call it their ultimate comfort, um, pre-shave oil that you rub in. Um, that stuff works fantastic. Um, this is another one, Prograsso. Uh, I especially like this during the summer. Like right now, it's actually kind of warm in here. Um, <laughs> the air conditioner is on, but, you know, I'm upstairs right now and, and the, uh, the way the thermostat is, it really doesn't pay attention to the upper floor during the day because it doesn't really expect people to be up here during the day. Um, so it is kind of warm up here. Um, but this is really great because it, there's, a, there's, a, there's some menthol uh, and I believe eucalyptus, yeah. So there's menthol and eucalyptus in here. So not only does it soften and work great as a, as a pre-shave, uh, but it also has kind of that cooling effect, um, which is really nice. Uh, so that's what we're going to use today. Um, and with the pre-shave, essentially what we're going to be doing is we're just going to get some hot water as hot as we can possibly stand it. In fact, a lot of times um, I will use an electric kettle. Um, it, you know, it's like a rapid boil thing. It takes 30 seconds. You fill it with some water. It takes 30 seconds. You set it on the base and it's boiling. Um, I'm not going to do that today because it's already so hot in here. I don't want to make more steam and more heat, but I'm just going to use the tap water. Um, plus, you know, if any of you guys are first starting out, you may not have something like that right away anyway. Um, so the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to run the water until it gets hot. And then I'm going to run some water in here and get this hot and then go ahead and put my brush in the water. And that's going to get it soaking so that A, the brush has time to soak some water um, and to warm up and both the scuttle and the brush itself will get warm. Um, and we'll swap that water out eventually. Um, once that's in there and ready to go, then I'm going to wet my face. I'm gonna apply the Pro Rasso, just rub it in, that's all. I'm not gonna use a brush for it or anything like that. Again, this is just a pre-shave. Once I do that, um, you know, a lot of times when I'm when I'm actually shaving normally, I'll I'll take a shower um, and in the shower I'll rub the Parasso on and that way the hot water and the steam and everything has time to work on it. Since I'm not doing that today, uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to take a towel, like a hand towel, soak it in some hot water, and again if you've ever watched somebody get a get a shave in a, in a barber shop, same kind of deal. They'll take the hot towel and wrap it around their face. I'm basically going to do the same thing. I'm just going to take the hot towel, put it over top of my face with the Parasso on, 
and give it a few minutes to soak and and again let it do its work and and soften those uh those hairs up all right so, so we've got our uh water running to the point where it's pretty warm so we're going to throw this in here and let it uh get some water in there kind of heat this whole scuttle up a little bit And then we'll set that right up there. Go ahead and get the brush wet down. And we'll throw that in there too. All right, so now we've got the brush soaking and the, uh, the scuttle warming up. So that hopefully will get warm here. We'll have to change the water out at least once. Um, again, if I was using my electric kettle, we wouldn't have to worry about that, but in this case we will. Um, and now we're uh, gonna go ahead and do our pre-shave. So this is the Parasso, the pre-shave that I was talking about. Um, and basically I'm just gonna wet my face first of all. Then we're going to take a bit of the Parasso like that and apply it. And again, I'm just rubbing this in kind of like you would the, uh, the canned goo stuff. Making sure to cover all the whiskers that I'm going to shave. And now, I'm going to take this towel and get it soaked in some nice hot water. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this towel, I'm going to drain some of that water out. Obviously I don't want to run it everywhere, um, but it'll still stay pretty warm and, and wet. Um, I'm going to wrap that around my face, you know, everywhere that I put the Parasso, uh, and then just uh, give it a few minutes, you know, maybe three, four minutes, something like that, to soak in, and then I'll be back with you guys. Alright, so we're back. Um, <clears throat> Gave that a few minutes to soak on my face, uh, and you know, just feeling the uh, the whiskers now, I can definitely tell a, a big difference. You know, they've they've softened up quite a bit. Um, a, a couple of tips: not only the uh, um, pre-shave the the Parasso, if you don't have that or, or can't get that, um, you know, another thing that you can do, and I'm going to go ahead while I'm talking and start rinsing this out and get another uh, batch of hot water in here. Um, another thing that you can use or do is is actually, <laughs> believe it or not, uh, just conditioner. The the same conditioner that uh, you know your girlfriend or wife probably has, um, or whoever. Um, you know, just plain old hair conditioner actually works really, really, really well um, for softening the the hair up. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take a cork and put that right in there like that. And that's just going to keep that hot water in there so if we dump that bowl, well when we dump that bowl, that water will, will stay in that, that scuttle and keep it nice and warm. Alright, 
So the next thing we're going to do is take our brush, squeeze some of the water out, not a lot. In fact, a lot of times what we do is just kind of give it a toss like that. So hopefully you can see, I mean, it's still, you know, quite wet. Um, dump that water out of there. And then there's a running joke on, on a lot of the, uh, the wet shaving forms or sites or places where you find like information that you want a snurdle or cream. Uh, you know, that's a snurdle. <laughs> um, you, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a dab. I, I don't know what to tell you. Different creams, you need different amounts. Um, you know, you can load it directly in the bowl or you can kind of load it in the breech of the brush. Some people prefer to kind of load it down in there. Um, you know, to me, as long as you're charging it, I don't think it really makes much of a difference. And then you just take your brush and start whipping it just like you were beating eggs or whatever. And every once in a while you kind of push it down and get it pushed back down into the breech. Now when you're first starting out, what I suggest is that after you've done a little bit of whipping like that, take the lather, a little bit of it, and feel it between your fingers. And feel how cushioning it is and how slick it is. Um, and then what I, what I actually suggest is before you ever take the step of shaving, to do this right here. Feel it, add a little bit of water, half a teaspoon, whatever, and then whip it again. And after you've got it really whipped in good again, do the same exact process and feel it again. Um, the reason for that is that there's a lot that rides on getting the lather hydrated correctly. If you don't have enough water, it's not going to soften the way that it should and it's going to kind of cushion and keep the razor away from the, the um, whiskers and it just isn't going to work correctly. On the other hand, if you get too much water, the lather will eventually just kind of blow out and by blow out, I mean it's, it's basically going to um, like... It, it, the, the bubbles, instead of being real tight, small bubbles like this, will actually get kind of large. And once they get large like that, um, it, it, stops having, it stops being slick. Like right now, this feels pretty slick. Um, once you get too much water, it kind of starts grabbing. And I mean, you know, if your hands are just wet and you rub your finger and thumb, they kind of stick more than normal even. So you don't want to get too much water or that will happen. Um, so just keep doing that. And, and like I said, my, my suggestion is before you ever even shave the first time, just keep going through that process. Um, you know, start very dry. Shake your brush, brush out a lot more than you, than you feel like you're supposed to. And feel it after you've whipped it a little. And then add water feel it again, add water, feel it again. And just keep doing that process until you get it to the point where you feel like, yes, this is what it needs to be. Um, what I mean by that is, you know, take it all the way till it blows out, till you say, oh, it's lost the slickness, it doesn't feel right anymore. And then after that, then go ahead um, and whip up another batch. Start over, do it again. And just keep doing that process over and over and over and over, you know, three, four, five times if need be, until you realize the exact point where that cream is working at its best. I do that even if I just get a new cream, even if it's the same brand, like this is Taylor of Old Bond Street, Mr. Taylor's. Um, you know, even if I were to get a different um, cream from Taylor of Old Bond Street, 
if it's one that I've never used before and I'm not familiar with it, I'll do that same process and go through that same exact process just to see how much water that particular cream needs to form um, to perform its best. So right now this is actually, this is feeling pretty good. It's a, it's a little dry, but again, I'm doing that kind of on purpose um, for the fact that I want to make sure not to uh, be paying attention to the camera and not shaving. Um, so you can kind of see how it holds its peaks there. That's one of the main things that you want to look for. So you can see how it kind of holds its peaks very well. Um, that's one of the main things that you want to look for. So like I said, this is, this is not ideal. I mean, technically it probably needs a little more water, but again, I, it's just going to give me a little bit of extra cushioning. I've already softened the beard pretty well, so I'm not too worried about it from that aspect. So, All right, now, so here we go. So basically at this point, the first thing I'm going to do, especially since I've been talking a lot, is I'm going to wet my face again. Normally I probably wouldn't have to do that, but again, it's kind of dry at this point because I've been doing other things. All right. Now we take a brush and we just kind of work kind of circles. And again, man, you guys can't smell this, but mm, amazing. So you can see I kind of worked it in at first um, and then kind of painted so, you, so I got good coverage everywhere. Um, now, take our razor. And what we're going to do is we're going to start out um, different than what you would typically think of like with a manual razor. So again, with those multi-blade things, you kind of push really hard and you kind of make these long passes. You don't want to keep going over. With a double edge like this, you actually want to kind of go very, very light and you're just doing short little strokes. So it looks kind of like this. Now as far as the angle, the, the ideal angle of the blade, you want the blade riding at a 30 degree angle to the skin. If you were using a straight, you know, it, it's kind of the same sort of thing. With this, because the angle is already built in, it depends on the razor. Different razors are going to have the handle at different ways. Um, but essentially, it's one of those things that you just kind of play, play around with and get the feel for. But if you look at where the blade is and like, you know, like right there, right now, the edge of this blade is straight up and down. So now I know if I'm going for a 30 degree angle, the blade kind of needs to be like that. And then I can just apply that and try to keep that angle. Very, very light, short strokes. Just like so. And basically what I'm doing is I'm using one side of the blade um, and then flipping the razor over and using the other and then rinsing the, you know, there's these channels that run through here and then I'm just rinsing it out.
Now the neck area can be kind of uh, <laughs> different, I guess, for different people. Because what we're doing here is, is you know, the first pass is, is what's referred to as a with the grain pass. So, you know, we've, we've went down, you know, because my whiskers on my cheeks grow down. So I've went with the grain of the whiskers. On your neck, I've done the same thing because in my case, the whiskers on my neck pretty much go straight down. They, they are at just a slight angle, but not enough for me to worry about. Here underneath the chin, they're a little bit more of an angle. Um, and then over here, same thing, but in the opposite direction. And then, you know, to about right here. And that's where they kind of meet up. So you kind of have to familiarize yourself just by feeling um, and getting used to or accustomed to, to how the grain runs and, and how that works. Um, but anyway, now if I was just shaving or if I was just starting out and, and I just wanted a nice decent shave right now I'm done I mean that's it um, you know it's that simple it's 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 a great experience there's absolutely no tugging no irritation nothing I mean it just feels like nothing gliding across the skin but I don't know if you guys could hear it but the entire time you can just hear those whiskers popping off one after the other um, it, it's actually kind of cool um, now, you know, right now when I feel this, you know, down uh, in a normal way, it, it feels very soft and, 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 you know, I've got a decent shave. Um, if I go against the grain, obviously I can still feel the whiskers a little bit. Um, a lot of people prefer, particularly when they're doing wet shaving, they prefer, you know, to do multiple passes. Now with me, most of the time, and, you know, I think a lot of it comes from experience. Like I said, I've been wet shaving for 12 years, over 12 years now. Um, so for me, you know, I'll do a with the grain pass and then my, I'll do a second pass. My very next pass will be against the grain. So I'll go against the grain on everything and that's it. I'm done. Um, and at that point, like even going, like taking your fingers and rubbing like this against the, the, the cheek or against the grain of the, you feel nothing. I mean... You know, the, the term that's used is baby butt smooth. Um, and that's exactly what it is. I mean, it's, it's amazing how smooth. Um, most people, especially when they're first starting out, their technique isn't all oh, that great or they're not that familiar or, you know, maybe they haven't got the cream perfected or whatever the case may be. So in those cases, you know, a lot of people would, if they're going to do multiple passes, when you're first starting out, it's probably best just to do one, especially the first time you shave. Um, once you get more familiar, then go to a multiple pass. And when you do multiple passes, instead of doing like I would typically do where, you know, it's with the grain and then directly against the grain, you know, a lot of times you'll, you'll do a cross grain, sometimes even two cross grains. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and do it that way so that if, if again, if you're just starting out or whatever, you can kind of get an idea of, of what I mean by that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and, and wet my face again and we'll put some more lather on. And I am not, by the way, reloading this brush or putting more lather on or anything like that. That's, that's one of the key things. You know, just that small amount of cream that you saw me put in that bowl, the snurdle, um, you know, there's more than enough lather in this to do four passes or more if I really wanted. So again... Work it in a little, and then kind of paint it. The other thing that you'll find is sometimes um, as the, the brush and the lather sit, they will lose a bit of water. So if at any point in time you feel like the lather started to lose some of the water and it needs a little bit more, don't be afraid to, to throw a little bit more water in there and whip it again. Um, yeah, it's perfectly acceptable. So now, 
if I was doing a like a say a four pass or, or even a three pass then my next thing is going to be a or, or across the grain so in this case I'm going to go this way um, because the first time I went straight down so that's going to be like this And you can probably see how much easier that razor is gliding over the skin now and that's because most of the whiskers are already gone there's just a little bit left i'm going to do this one because i'm facing this way i'm going to actually look in the mirror which is over here um so because it's easier especially turned this way than trying to look into the camera And the neck again in, in my case my my neck on this side goes here so to do my first against the green I'm actually going to go this way and then same thing here but the opposite Now right under my chin, technically speaking, when I first shaved, I went this way. Um, that's because the hairs pretty much go this direction, right underneath. Um, there's a little bit of variation there, but they, you know, they get a little crazy in that area because it's the two sides kind of meeting up. Um, and, and you will be completely different, you know, what, that's why I said you kind of have to familiarize yourself with your own face. Um, so for me, I'm just going to do another normal pass because that really is a cross grain pass. And all I did there was I kind of varied as I went side to side. Instead of just going straight down this time, I kind of varied it back and forth. So that's across the grain. Um, you know, again, typically if I'm, if, if I'm doing it, you know, at a, a four pass, um, the very first time you want to go for a baby, a baby butt smooth shave, I definitely recommend doing the four passes. Just the number one thing is at any point in time, if you start to feel like, like, even that pass there, as I'm going over the skin, there's no irritation, there's no pulling, there's nothing. I mean, it's it's fine, you know. It's it again. It just feels like metal gliding over the skin. At any point in time, if you feel any irritation or anything like that, stop. Don't go any farther. Um, you know, one of the worst mistakes that I learned with the very first time, 12 years, 12 over 12 years ago, the very first shave that I did. Um, <laughs> It was a nightmare. Let me let me just tell you, um, it was it was pretty bad. I mean, I got a fantastic shave. Uh, I just didn't really have much of a face left because I had used way too much pressure and, and made too many passes the first time, and it, it was there was a lot of irritation, and my face was you know just bright red, and it hurt for a long time. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, if you feel like you know, don't press on. Don't you, you know? There's that that sense of urgency when you're doing it and you're like, well, it's not that bad. I just feel it grabbing a little bit here and there. Stop. Don't do it. Just end it right there. If you've got that first with the grain shave, you're going to be fine. You're going to shave every bit as good as if you had used a multi-blade manual razor or an electric razor or whatever. With that first pass, you're just as good. If you want to go smoother and you want to do it, that's fine. But just at the first sign of any kind of irritation or anything, don't keep going. All right, so 
in this case, this will be our third pass. So we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to rinse my face and then I'm actually going to add a little bit of water because I'm talking a lot and my lather is starting to dry out just a little bit. So I'm going to add a little bit of water to that lather. Not a lot, just a little. About the same amount as what you saw earlier when I was adding in amounts. There we go. Now we're going to do across the grain. This time we're going to do it in the opposite direction. So before we went this way, now we're going to go this way. Same thing over here. Now again, because of the direction of growth, cross the grain from the other way, you know, before we went this way, now it's actually, uh, no, yeah, eh, I can't remember which way direction we actually went. I think we went this way, so we're going to go this way now. And again, that section in the middle, I just went the same direction for now. All right, that's it. So we've done our three passes. Now we got the last one. Again, if this is the first time you're doing it and you get to this point, as soon as, if, if on that last pass you felt any irritation or anything like that, stop. You don't need to go any farther. Right now, this is, this is a, I mean, <laughs> This is smooth. This is amazingly smooth. If you want to go that last step and get it absolutely perfect, then do it like this. This is against the grain. Um, so basically we're going to do the same thing. Lather up. All right, so here we go. So I'm gonna actually start with my neck this time. 
and I'm going to kind of pull down and stretch the skin as much as I can. Very light touch. Now, if you're going to feel any sort of irritation or issues, right on that cheek line, a lot of times is where it'll actually happen. Again, if you feel it, if you do get it there, like with me, especially because I've done four passes and I usually don't, um, when I was right on that cheek line, I could feel it starting to tug the whiskers just a little bit. Um, you know, I, again, if you feel any of that, especially if you're just starting out, just skip that area right there. Move past it. You can finish the rest of it as long as, but if there's more irritation somewhere else, skip it or just stop. You know what? Like I said, even right now, if you get this far and you're like, oh no, I can feel it's irritating or whatever, stop. It's not going to bother you because you've already shaved so well the rest of it. It's not going to matter that there's one area that's a little bit smoother than the other. Now we'll get the other side. And again, that area right under my chin is, is the hardest place for me to shave um, because that's the area that on me the, the whiskers all kind of go in different directions. So now we can finish up with the cheeks. Alright guys, a little bit of a technical issue. Uh, <laughs> the batteries in my camera died. I, I've shot a bunch of other uh, videos this morning um, doing the hive inspections for the bees and everything. So unfortunately, uh, I'm not going to be able to show you finishing up this last little section here uh, because I've all of my batteries are dead. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and finish up and then I'm going to charge one of my batteries and then we'll kind of talk about, I'll come back and we'll talk about finishing up. All right, so there we go. Finish that off. Um, again, you know, <laughs> at this point, no irritation. You know, that's just, it, even going across the grain, there is absolutely nothing there. No, like there's no feeling. There's nothing grabbing. There are no whiskers there at all. It is baby butt smooth. It takes a while to get to that point. You know, don't rush it, but it's there. It's definitely achievable. This is one of the great things about wet shaving. You can absolutely get the best shave of your life. <laughs> and it's, you know, pretty cheap to do so. Um, so especially on an ongoing basis. Um, so anyway, uh, as a, as a remaining step, um, after you're done, you know, I just rinsed my face, got some of the lather off, um, you know, now you can kind of, you can dry it off. Um, you know, there's tonics that you can spray on. Uh, you can just use a traditional aftershave lotion or balm or, or whatever. Um, the other thing that, the thing that I like to do is I actually use one of these. Um, if you don't know what this is, this is an alum block. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a mineral. 
uh, and basically run it underwater and then you rub it over top of your face and it seals the pores it's an antiseptic you know if you do get like any like sometimes if if you get um, you know like a little blemish in your skin or something as a razor pops over it um, I don't know if I oh yeah actually I did see uh, I don't know if you can see there or not but there was just like a little bump right here um, and you know as the blade kind of passed over it, it it just kind of you know nicked it a little bit right there didn't feel it um but it, I, well i didn't even know that i had it but again sometimes it happens you know this as it passes over it'll seal it up stops it from from weeping like that um anything like that you know and if you do get a bad shave <laughs> or if you were a little too rough or too heavy-handed whatever the case may be this will let you know because when you rub it over it if it if it doesn't have like any you know stinging or anything like that you did a great job any areas if it stings you know that that's an area that you didn't do a great job um, but it also you know after it stings for a moment it'll kind of get rid of a lot of the irritation if there is any um, but there shouldn't be any because if you felt any irritation you should have stopped <laughs> so anyway so I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and do that um, once I hit it with the Allen block, I give it just a moment to kind of dry a little bit. Not not dry, but just kind of, you know, work in a little. Um, I'll towel dry off. Uh, and then a lot of times I'll follow up with, uh, you know, an aftershave uh, of some sort. Uh, really, it kind of depends. Um, you know, there's there's two main things that are, that are typically available. Um, one is just a regular aftershave. These are like the alcohol-based ones. Uh, you know, the Macaulay Culkin, that kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, I use those a lot, especially in the summer. Um, they, again, it, it helps seal the pores, you know, really. Uh, plus, it, a lot of them have a, a pleasing scent. Um, one of the ones that, that I like, um, <laughs> old school, I guess, is is good old Aqua Velva Blue. Um, I also have uh, one that's made by Izod that I like a lot. Um, again, there's, there's a lot of them out there, um, and, and I've tried a lot of them. Um, there's also balms. Uh, balms I tend to use more in the winter time. Um, balms are the ones that are more, they're a little bit more like a lotion. Um, a lot of times they still have alcohol in them, but, but they they have more moisturizing. Um, I don't like those as much in the summertime because they tend to be a little bit clingy. Um, whereas the, the, um, alcohol-based ones kind of flash off, they'll cool, they'll soothe, and at the same time, you know, they're just kind of gone, and it's, it's a little fresher feeling to me in the summer. Um, so winter times, I tend to, to gravitate towards the bombs, and, and summertime towards the uh, just pure alcohol-based ones. Um, so anyway, so I'm going to do that, and then, uh, then we'll be back. All right, so there we go. We've got our, uh, our brush rinsed out, and basically to do that, all we did was just run it under the water, scrubbed it on her hand a little bit um, once it was you know rinsed out pretty good just kind of give it a few, few flicks to get the rest of the water off rinsed our uh, scuttle out there the razor itself you know again just rinsed it off now we'll let it out and and let it dry uh, and that's pretty much it so there you have it guys so that's it uh, we're all shaved up like I said I mean it doesn't get any smoother than that that is just uh, an absolute supreme shave um, you know, when I put the Allen block on, uh, again, I did have a little bit of irritation down here around the chin. That's, that's, you know, most of the time I don't get that. Every once in a while I will, especially if I'm in a hurry. Um, you know, it wasn't, it, it was just, it was enough to let me know that, hey, next time you should be a little more careful. I expected it this time just because of the fact that I was trying to shoot the video. So I was taking a lot longer between passes. The lather was drying out a little bit more and, you know, things like that, but you know, definitely nothing, uh, no big deal. Um, you know, it's a, it's a fantastic way to shave. It really is. Um, you know, it's, it's a, it's an experience. The, uh, the, the hot towel, um, you know, the pre-shave, the, the scents, you know, the, the sounds, um, it's, it's one of those things that you just have to experience in order to really truly appreciate. Um, and, and until you do, you just, you don't know what you're missing. So anyway, that's it guys. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If leave me some comments, 
If you have any questions, if you want to get started wet shaving, let me know. I'll be glad to try to, you know, help you or make any suggestions about, you know, what you might need to get started or, or if you're having any issues, if you are wet shaving already uh, and you want to, you know, if you're having issues or you want to, you know, feel free to ask. I'll do what I can. Uh, there's also, there's, there's some great forms out there. One of the ones that I actually like is it's called Badger and Blade. Uh, it's actually one of the forms that I got my start on. Um, you know, got a lot of great information and a lot of guys on there that are really willing to help and, and go the extra mile to, to help you guys out. Um, like I said, this was something a little bit different, uh, but something I was hoping that you guys might find interesting. Uh, if, if you've come across this video due to the wet shaving and you haven't seen some of my other videos, um, you know, I've got a lot of them up there. Check them out. Uh, one of the most popular videos that we do are, are uh, we have a beehive in our backyard uh, and there's videos up there of everything from, you know, the very first day that we installed the package right up until, as a matter of fact, this morning we were doing a, a hive inspection. Um, you know, my, my son and I, that's why the batteries were dead. Uh, so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, until next time, we'll see you later.